I watched 31 movies in October, and here's how they rank. Escape from Tomorrow is an independent film about a family that goes to a Disney theme park and might be one of my least favorite movies I've ever seen. The story is all over the place and takes weird turns that doesn't even make sense. I couldn't wait to get through the mess. Spooky Buddies was so bad that I was just watching it for the dogs. The dialogue is very awkward and the actors have to be people they took off the street because they are terrible. It's so bad that it's funny, but it was dreadful to get through. Under Wraps 2 felt like the first movie in some ways, but they wanted to go bigger so they added some very stupid things. They made it about an evil mummy trying to destroy the friendly mummy from the first movie and take his mummy girlfriend. I could not care about the stakes of the movie at all. The Spirit Halloween movie is something I had high hopes for because I am someone who loves going to Spirit Halloween. I wanted to see the animatronics come to life. The acting, dialogue, and story made this movie very forgettable and simply an advertisement for the store. The biggest problem is that every character just acts dumb and even though the set was cool, that was about it. Scooby-Doo 2 was cool in the way we get to see old Scooby-Doo villains. They try to have too much going on or couldn't focus on what it wanted to be. And of course it has so many stupid scenes just like any Scooby-Doo film would, but I just wanted to skip past these. The reveal at the end was very good though. Under Wraps was better than expected, but I totally meant to watch the 1997 version of this, but I messed up and watched the 2021 version. It was a funny story about a mummy trying to learn about today's world, but it did have the cringy Disney acting. I expected this to be a lot worse, but I was surprised I cared for the mummy. Hush has a great concept, a deaf woman being hunted by a crazy killer, but it wasn't executed as well as it could have been. The mask alone that the killer wears is just as good as some of the other iconic masks, but I don't get why he takes it off so early. Other than the intense beginning, it loses a lot of interest as it drags on. Casper had a really enjoyable first half, but it didn't seem to know what direction it was going in. Some of the jokes were very cringy, and when it comes to the characters that weren't the ghosts, I did not care about them at all. Scooby Doo was just a classic that I happen to revisit every so often, and I love the scent of the small island. It was honestly exactly what I remembered with a pretty great twist. It's always fun to see the gang solve a mystery, but I don't think it beats any of the animated Scooby Doo content. Halloween Ends has to be the hardest ranking for me here because I have too many thoughts about it. I did not think this movie was going to go the way it did and I don't think it fits the trilogy they were going for. Michael Myers is very different in this one compared to other Halloween movies. The Hills Have Eyes was a decent film that I ended up not liking as much as the first time I saw it. It's a classic story of a family breaking down and ending up in a bad scenario. The makeup of the creatures was great and it's shot in a really simple but great way. I don't think I care enough for the story all that much. The Haunted Mansion is a classic and funny Eddie Murphy movie that has many moments that were just silly and outlandish. The visuals really helped set the tone for what we were getting, but at moments I didn't care for the entire family or some of the ghosts. I would love to see a darker version of this made. Tower of Terror had a bit of everything to make it a pretty good repeat watch. Even though this is a Disney movie, it had something I was not quite expecting, which were some slightly creepy moments. And even the twist is a bit obvious, it was good. The scent of the hotel and the fact it's based on the Disney ride helps this movie a lot. Halloween Town is pretty slow and the story is very simple which I don't think is a bad thing. The best thing about the movie is how it makes the viewers feel like Halloween Town is a real place. I would love to visit it. It puts the plot in the background and the characters in the foreground, but honestly I just really like learning about the characters. Signs started out very slow and I kept wondering if anything interesting would happen. Once it started actually showing off the aliens, everything got a little bit more interesting which I thought had a decent payoff. I like how they didn't show too much alien, but when they did it was pretty creepy. The thing was in the same boat with signs. It started off extremely slow, but picks up once we learn more. The crew tries to find out which crewmate is the thing because it can take shape of its victims. It kills some of the crewmates in very disturbing ways. Annabelle Creation had scares that were all very predictable, but the old house was used as a nice set piece to set the tone. I expected to see the Annabelle doll moving around by itself, but we didn't get to see much of this, which I think added to my enjoyment of the movie. It avoided something that could be seen as cheesy, and it had a really nice plot to it. The Blair Witch Project is a movie I avoided for a very long time since I didn't think I would enjoy found footage at all. It ended up being such a thrill watching the group get lost in the woods and it felt very real. While we never seen any bad guys, I think it added to how scary it was. Avira has so many really funny jokes that I think I would quote in real life. I didn't know how much I would like her, but she was really great. The town was a better bad guy than the actual final boss. Children of the Corn was very simple, a bit slow, but it was very interesting seeing a call to children killing and being the main villains of the movie, which is something we don't get much of. The start of the movie was so brutal and I loved it.
Saw is such an iconic gore series that starts off with the balance of a great story with twists and turns. It also has brutal moments that make you want to look away from the screen, but that's what I like about it. It Follows was one of the scary movies out of the list just because the thought of this happened to me is terrifying. The movie does an amazing job showing off the main character getting infected and having someone follow them who is set to kill at any moment. Only the person infected can see the supernatural being though, so it allows for some fun moments. The ending was a little bit weird, but it was still good. Fear Street Part 1 reminded me of Scream in a lot of ways, but then quickly got away from the idea and made it its own thing about a witch. I did not know when it would end as it kept going which led to some very surprising moments. It kind of reminded me of a Disney movie, but with some kills. Beetlejuice is such a fun movie, and I love how this movie doesn't get into the character of Beetlejuice until much later. We get to learn about him slowly just as the main characters learn about him. We get to learn about how the main characters deal with death. A Quiet Place starts off with one of the most unforgettable scenes I've seen ever. A series of creatures who hunt off of only sound has taken over Earth and watch a family traverse their surroundings. It is brutal, but a wonderful family story. Free was a really crazy movie. The awkwardness alongside the found footage style camera work was just amazing. Seeing Joe Curie's character slowly go off the deep end trying to find his own fame in his own way was a spectacle that even weeks later I'm still thinking about. I really liked everything about this movie and I would even consider rating it higher. Fear Street Part 3 started out very slowly but the story was very good. The twist and awesome fight towards the end made it a great conclusion to the three part series. I loved how it took from different horror characters and stories we have heard before but changed it up a lot. The Nightmare Before Christmas is an amazing Tim Burton film that I come back to every so often. All the character designs are great, and putting a twist on a likely Christmas story works so perfectly. Fear Street Part 2 added on to what we learned in Part 1. As a continuation of the story, we get to learn more about the witch haunting this little town and how the witch can make someone evil. There's so many different stories going on at once here, but it comes down to being one of the best camp slashers I've ever seen. Sixth Sense was amazing the second time because it gave it a completely different experience that I enjoyed even more than before. I was caught off guard by how many short moments of creepy events happen that were very effective for the story and none of them felt out of place at all. I need to start this all by saying I am very biased towards this movie. Scream is my favorite movie of all time. I even dressed up as Ghostface for Halloween. I've always loved how the movie starts immediately with the scene of Ghostface killing somebody. The aspect of trying to figure out who the killer is makes it great on a first watch and just as good on other watches as well. Well, there you go. All the movies I watched in October ranked.